slept. <laughs> yeah. That was her big thing. She didn't need any sleep. <laughs> and you remind me very much of her, Katrina. <laughs> Well, I did uh, manage to close my eyes for about 10 minutes on uh, m when I was moving today, and I think sometimes if you can do that, grab a quick power nap, you can keep going. Yeah, I'm all for power naps. I might have one in a couple of minutes, actually, <laughs> now that you're here to take over. So it's the women's 1500 metres T12. Now let's see how I'm getting on with my classifications. T12, I think, will be for uh, partially sighted runners. Very good job. T11 would be for blind runners, and T13 would be partially sighted but with better vision. That's right. But we do have a combination of both in this race. Uh, we've got T11s and T12. So you'll probably see with the guide runners there being with the T11 athletes. The T12 athletes are the ones probably that don't have a guide. Um, it makes it very difficult for me when they have the guides to pick out who the people are because <laughs> uh, you're looking for the numbers and then suddenly there's all these people in the orange fluorescent bibs. Is Elena Pautova of Russia, season's best of 4.39.83, which uh, is the fastest so far, so she'll be one of the favourites. The way the, the camera works, this, it, they tend to pick out the, the better runners or, or the local favourites or the famous runners. I think it's a shame, actually. I was in the stadium the other day and I thought that they should all be introduced to the crowd. And um, I was watching a, a 100 metres race and, it was, and there yes. were eight people and they pick out three yes. and you think, well, I think well, everyone deserves to be picked out, but that's this just This has me. changed because this happened for every one of my events. It went through the order and everyone mm. would be announced. So um, I agree with you. I think it doesn't take too much to give people that <coughs> honour of making it to the start line. Absolutely, and they're off. And, uh, as, you know, if you're not going to win, then you don't get called out. And I think that's a, sh a shame. Mm. You were lucky because you probably would have got <laughs> picked out anyway because you kept winning golds. Yeah. Well, look at that. Gone into formation straight away. Um, one of my interesting comments of the games is I haven't yet seen one female guide runner. And I'm having a bit of discussion with a few friends around this of mm. where are all the female athletes that maybe have uh, in the midst of their career or but we see plenty of male guide runners and that's a wonderful thing. But if you were a, a partially sighted runner you would want the best guide and the best guide would be a man wouldn't it do you think <laughs> yeah be well because men are stronger and faster aren't they so well well true um but over certain distances i think still female female guide runners can be helpful i was talking to a friend of mine who is a guide runner the other day and um you only need to be about half a second better than your athlete over 100 meters mm. maybe a second over 400 so uh, depending on the classification, I think there would be some very good women runners out there that could do the same thing. Not to say the men aren't doing a great job, but uh, just a general observation. I think you're trying to take away our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Coming over here, having, our, having all these free lunches, <laughs> taking away the men's jobs. So uh, it's Elena Congost of Spain comfortably uh, in the lead there. 24 years of age, Tweed 12 uh, runner. And... Uh, Actually, she's in second now, Elena Patova of Russia in the lead. So it's the two Elenas, Patova of Russia from Kongost of Spain. And uh, the Russian has the fastest season's best by three seconds. So uh, as they're both called Elena, I'm going to call them the Russian and the Spaniard. <laughs> and uh, if you know your flags, you'll know it's the Russian ahead. Red and yellow of Spain in second place. Yeah, setting very good pace there. Here come our T11 athletes, and uh, you can see their guides speaking to them, particularly when they come out of, of the bends. And the, the bends are more the harder parts to run, so they'll be now telling them as we go around the corner, OK, we're just heading out of the straight, getting into the bend to just to change their technique to come out. Um, but obviously, as a longer distance event, the guides are probably more there as a support when we talk about the sprinting every step is crucial uh, with athletes to make sure right from their blocks they're out in the same rhythm. Now I'm going to say something very obvious because I think it's something that viewers across the world will all be thinking. The, the two at the front have an enormous advantage because they've got better sight, they haven't got the guide runners. Why, why haven't they got their own final? Well that's a good point and you see this in the games um, depending on how many athletes we have in these classes. Mm. So. Often, if there's if not a strong depth of athletes, we, we might not even be able to have an event. So when we look at this event, we've got uh, probably more T11 runners. Um, and when we combine it, we can have a stronger field and make sure there isn't 
better than not having an event at all. They'll do the combination. Absolutely, right? yeah. I, I, I just suppose yeah, people good, looking at that will think, well, there's two that haven't got yes. guide runners, and they're the lead two, yes. and then all the others are, are a long way back. Yes. And of course, you know, you can't go as fast if you can't see. But anyway, it's uh, Paltova and Kongos, the Russian and the Spaniard, and the Russian Elena Paltova puts her head down now, and I think she's going to try and sprint away. Can the Spanish girl catch her? The Russian's 26, the Spaniard's 24. The Russian's PB is about three seconds faster, and I think this is going to be gold for Russia. Yeah, she's really taking it away on the back straight. Fantastic technique. We see the Spaniard just starting to slow down a little bit, but the Russian is really stepping it up. Coming into the last 200 metres where she'll really work off of this bend. Keep the momentum going to come home with whatever she's got left in the tank and hopefully cross that line. First to take out the gold medal of the women's 1500 T12. Minetti of Italy is the fastest of the runners with guide runners but the Russian really putting her head down now now the world record uh, 419 20 not in any danger at all but uh, her personal best is 436 38 so she might just get that 436 I think she'll be just outside it yeah just outside her uh, personal best but it's a season's best for Elena Pautova of Russia Elena Kongost of Spain 24 years of age will get the silver and uh, it was Manetti of Italy coming in for the bronze, but she may well have been overtaken. It's hard to see. So, oh no, oh, what a shame. The guide runner lost his athlete. Oh, now she's fallen down. Oh, that's a terrible, oh. terrible shame. You heard the cast right round the stadium. Get up and finish. You get a big cheer. I'm just not quite sure what happened there because when the camera picked it up, mm. he was away from his athlete, so he's obviously gone to. It's Fuiza of Portugal and she'll get a big cheer from the crowd. Oh, what a shame the camera's come away just as she was getting across the line because nice to see her finish. Yeah, she seemed to, have, to be a long way ahead of her guide runner somehow and then he was racing to catch up with her. That's right. And then he sort of tried to say, I'm behind you and, and, and actually pushed her and she fell over. But uh, the Russian has won the gold. She's saying, where's my flag? <laughs> she is. Spanish girl's got silver, <laughs> she's got a flag. Where's my flag? There's one, I love that. Give me a flag. There you go. Hooray. From the Russian team. Off she goes. Cut. Still looking like she could do another 1500 metre final. Yeah. It's Fantastically high tuned athlete. Look at that physique. Beautiful six pack, strong arms. She's obviously trained for a very long time. It's not actually physically possible to do a lap of honour without a flag. You have to have a flag. <laughs> it's, it's the law, it's the Paralympic <laughs> law. If you, if you do a lap of honour without your flag, they take your medal away. It's, <laughs> it's in the rule books. It, not many people know about it. But yeah, you do have to have a flag for the lap of honour. And she's To feel answer. like you're a superwoman, I think. That's it. Like yeah, a cape. Like, like a I've just won. I'm is. the best in the world and look at me, I can fly. It's a cape flying out behind. Well done to Alina Petova from Russia. Now, last night I was... Uh, doing the athletics we were off probably at some meal or something and we were trying to get people to like the Facebook group for Paralympic Games to get it over 100,000 oh, I've seen it it's over 100,000 it during God Save the Queen oh. last night it went over 100,000 very fitting and it was 115,000 the last time I saw there's the Portuguese athlete who finished I do hope they're not disqualifying her that would be just rotten 